Scott, the manager, Walter Smith, is also here. He has a get-together later this month of his international players. Celtic sporting their new away kit. So, the top two from last season meet early this season in a showdown to Saber at Tyne Castle. It's Hearts, it's Celtic, it's next. Hearts against Celtic, always compulsive viewing. Here we go with Scott Booth and Ian Crocker. East meets West, Edinburgh meets Glasgow, the runners-up meet the champions, and this compact stadium is just perfect for a match like this. It's steep stands. Make it feel like everyone's right on top of the action, and there should be action of plenty today. Paul Telford back in the Celtic side after injury. And Celtic's new away kit on show. Mikalunas for Ibrahim Tal, preferred to Robbie Nielsen in that right back role and looking to make an impact straight away. Alvis Ivanauskas confirmed as Hart's head coach in the summer after a caretaker spell last season. And his team have got a corner off Yarrison. Yeah, it's a good start for Hearts. Tal will be hoping that he continues as he started there, coming up on the right-hand side and getting the corner for Hearts. The trusty left foot of Neil McCann will whip this in. It was cleared by Yarishik. Nakamura trying to help it on his way, and Celtic have a free kick. A change of referee for today's game. By the way, it was supposed to be Kenny Clark, but he's injured. So Stuart Dougal is in charge. Gordon Strachan is in charge of Celtic. He won two out of three domestic trophies in his first season, including, of course, a 40th league title for Celtic. Kenny Miller rising with Stephen Presley, his international teammate. And Wilson goes back to McManus, who scored those two goals here on New Year's Day that made such a difference in the race for the title last season. Already, and you see there, Petrov making a run forward, not being picked up. That's going to be interesting today to see how Aguiar and Brelli do pick up the runs of Petrov and, of course, Jarrison. There is a cracking atmosphere at Tank Castle, but then there usually is. Aguiar's cross. Oh, Bednar had a swing at it, and it eluded McCann too. Yeah, Hearts have started well, just couldn't connect there. Well, these two teams produced some enthralling encounters last season and there is every reason going to expect more of the same this time around. Presley, Bearer. Brilliant. McCann. One back by Nakamura. Now Kenny Miller, who began his career in the city of Edinburgh with Hibbs. Nakamura. Mark Wilson's in a bit of space, just here. Yarashit. He scored. SPL debut against Kilmarnock. And you can see him getting quite a few for Celtic bursting into the box. He definitely offers a great deal of height in there, but also movement, timing of the run as we saw last week. As we say, when you have Jarosik in there and Petrov, it causes a problem. And we are seeking out Bednar. Pospazil is the only man in the middle of the moment, and Bednar's not going to find his fellow Czech like that. But already as Bednar plays the ball in there, you see McCann getting in at the back post, 
and that's going to be really important for Hearts today. But either midfield player from the wide position gets themselves into the box because both Bednar and Pospisil are willing runners. Nikolunas preferred to Chesnowskis. Brazil. Your hearts do have a physical element to their game. With Bednar and Post up front. Already showing that. Here's Neil McCann. And uh, must have been pretty watered in the, that part of the pitch. came from 2-0 down to win 3-2 here on New Year's Day last season that opened up a seven point gap at the top, Hearts never really recovered and Celtic clinched the title in early April with another win over the Jambos I think that was the turning point of last season for both clubs but I think it's obviously too early in the season to be talking about turning points at the moment but both clubs will want to maintain their winning start to the season. And it's always going to be now a big game between these two clubs. Hearts and Celtic looking to make it two wins out of two. Only two clubs have managed that so far in the SPL. St Mirren and Falkirk, as we all thought. Bednar losing out to... Cordwell. Certainly the uh, watering of the pitch there has left it heavy. A hands cross in towards Costasil. Corner. Yeah, the ball just gets caught up there. McCann takes advantage, tries to get the early ball in. It's a good ball. Just too far past the front post and trying to flick it on. Bruno. Aguiar with the corner, a bit too long though. Hearts desperate to get Paul Hartley, their main influence back in their team, ASAP. Yeah, he's absolutely vital for them, vital for Valdas there as well, Ivanauskas. He want Paul Hartley back as quickly as possible, he gives you the drive and the pace in midfield. And he chalks up uh, one or two goals as well, and he's, he's not too bad looking so far. Oh, yeah. And I think that's going to be the interesting thing for me today is the two sitting midfield players of Hearts. They're going to cause problems for Celtic when they're going forward. Here's Bednar causing a problem at the moment himself. Um, Petrov and Telfer deciding what to do. That's gone out of Lee Wallace, preferred to Takis Fisas. Vardis ain't a happy man. Yarashit, Nakamura. Now Celtic getting into their stride, apart from the return from Zaraski. Yeah, we're seeing it's going to be difficult for Celtic to combat the two sitting midfield players. They offer a, a lot different a prospect compared to last week against Kilmarnock. Won it back off Nakamura. Pospisil though loses out to his fellow countryman Yarashi. Nagidi, who played a, a good 70 minutes or so in Japan on Thursday. Wilson taking over, but can't find a way past Ibrahim Tal. already this season has played at centre half right back and in midfield the Senegalese international oh. 
Tal again. McManus should have this covered. Bednar closing in on Boritz. Zaraski chasing, Christoph Fair has gone with him and will marshal it behind. He got a bit of a whack as well. But a good start of the season, Christoph Fair. Yeah, I think he looks like a, a very, very good player. It's not too bad when you can come in and play alongside Stephen Presley, but he has looked assured since the start of the season. Hey, skipper on the bench for Celtic today. Usual experience for him. Bobo Balde sidelined at the moment for Celtic, but he was uh, in the dressing room pretty much with his teammates. Caldwell for Nakamura. Called well, jeered by the Hearts fans, former captain of Hibs, wouldn't you just know? You can see in that from Celtic deal of possession, both McGeady and Nakamura are tucking in, I think to leave the spaces in the channels for the, the movement of Zaraski and Miller up front, which was so effective last week. Celtic put their pre-season woes behind them with a 4-1 win over Kilmarnock on the opening weekend. Hearts 1-2-1 at Dunfermline. Kenny Miller getting involved with Grelier. Sides hoping to lay down some early season markers and signal their intent. But it's quite surprising though, Ian, with all the players that Hearts have brought to this team, that when Paul Hartley is out, there's no direct replacement for him. Christoph Bera hoisting that high into the sky. There are some uh, sticky areas of the pitch. They were watering it quite a bit in the build-up to kick-off, and uh, there were a couple of holes in the hose as well that they let out to the centre circle. So some parts of the uh, surface very watery at the moment. You think of the money they've got, they could afford a new hose. Boric's the keeper will come and take this. With 30 minutes gone, and neither of the sides have managed to create a, a real decent chance yet. I think they're just at the moment sizing each other up a little bit. I think that uh, obviously the two front men for each club are going to be very, very important today to try and get on the ball and, and help the team push up as much as possible. McGeady. He's got a free kick as Brillier dived in. And Stuart Dougal wants a word. With Brillier. Maybe a card in fact. Yep. Yeah, Brillier just timed that one wrong. That is his job, that's what he's there to do to break up the Celtic attack. But that's not too good so early in the game to pick up a yellow card for Brillier. He does now. He's living in the edge a little bit because, as I say, he's the, he's the guy, the first line of attack for Hearts, and he'll be doing that all game, and now he'll be very, very careful. Well, Stephen McManus scored twice in that 3-2 win here on New Year's Day. 
Nakamura floats it in. Well, Gary Caldwell was the nearest Celtic man to it. Yeah, it's all about the delivery here. It's a great ball in into a very, very good area, and Caldwell just getting caught in front of the ball. I think that's going to be important today for Celtic with such a strong Hearts defence that they can't use Nakamura and Petrov from dead ball situations. Christoph Berra commanding. Nakamura, fancy footwork to skip away from the camp. And he's picked out Magidi effortlessly. Wilson. Magidi, stumbling. We are. Needs assistance from Presley. McManus with a foul on Bednar. You can see there the way when the, the Celtic attack broke down. Aguirre picks the ball up. There's no one to play it to, no one who then can provide the drive in there or the vision in there. And that may cause a problem for Hearts today. We are then with this free kick. And Ibrahim Tal only scores at Murrayfield, he does. Ten Scots on show for Walter Smith to watch by the side. He won a few caps in his time. Strachan. Pospisil. It's just veered away from Mikelunas, although Pospisil not giving it up, and a foul by Yarosic. Right in front of the ref. And uh, the Hearts fans felt that Yarosic should have got the same thing. Brilliant. Got unlucky there, he takes the ball. will be 19 later this month just agreed a five-year deal with Hearts amid uh, rumours of interest from Dundee United Saraski so rising with Berra McCann Nakamura. we are will leave it for Wallace. Tal. Michalunas. we are challenged by Yarosip. Petrov. Kenny Miller. Once at Hibs. Hearts fans never likely to forget that. The Guinea's cross. Always good going behind Miller. Yeah, you can already see the difficulty for Celtic against the Hearts side with the best defence last season. Quick free kick. Yarosik, Petrov. Nice idea by Petrov. Quick handball shot against Taraski. It's not going to matter anyway because Telfer's cross goes behind, but Craig Gordon furious that there was no uh, decision given. Handball against the Polish striker. I think he just uses his arm a little bit there. It's a good shout from the Hearts players. 
but it's been difficult to, to break down this, this Hearts defence and it's a, it's a real problem, the only way you can do it really is get in behind them or try and thread some passes through to the quick men up front. Bednar won it, and they are splashing in tunnels on uh, this side of the pitch after that uh, leaking hose pipe. It's a shove on Bednar. Free kick hearts. It's an area that normally Celtic don't have any problems in, but with now a lack of real physique in there. It can cause a problem. Presley and Berra joining the throng. Aguiar delivers, and it's Bednar's header just wide. Yeah, it's a fantastic ball in. That's what I mean. Players like Bednar and Pospisil, desperate to get on the end of it. Tal as well has some height in there. And at the heart of the Celtic defence, they do lack that physical element. Reliez's mistake has given Nagidi a chance. Presley will turn it away to Tal. Offside Bednar. Well, this Ivanauskas was a powerful striker in his day, played in Germany for Hamburg. It's maybe why he likes the combination of Bednar and Pospisil up there. They do tend to try and bustle the way to success. Manus. Just up there uh, watching that all the way. In by McCann, but it bounced off Pospisil. Yarashek. Not too much on that. It's quite tough there for the Hart central midfield. You see Aguirre are trying to get close to Jarasek there, but because his starting position is so deep, he's giving the Celtic midfield player two or three yards of space and as the game opens up towards the second half of this game that might prove vital for Celtic Celtic automatically in the Champions League this season Hearts hoping to join them there but first they must get past AK Athens Petrov, Nakamura, and spraying some neat passes around now, Celtic. Nakamura into the path of Wilson. Yarishin. Nakamura's lost it this time to Aguiar and to Mikelunis here. But uh, Yarishin got a block it. Remember, you can choose your man of the match today by ringing the appropriate number on your screen there, and if your choice is the same as Scott Booth's and you're picked out, you'll win a signed shirt from the man of the match himself. Yeah, I think that's certainly causing a problem there. Janice getting on the ball far too easily. Aguirre again can't get close to him. I think Nakamura's had a great start to the game, throwing the ball, doesn't lose the ball very easily, but he also has great vision and a delicate touch. Wallace. Well, Hart 
Norwich did uh, beat Celtic here towards the end of last season, 3-0, but the championship had already been won by then. It was a result that certainly aided Valdez Ivanowski's side, though, in their quest to finish as runners-up. Tal. No foul, but Tal has stayed down. Rikidi's lost it anyway. Oh, they're not kicking the ball out yet. No foul on Tolfa from Bednar. Tal is still down injured, but here's McCann. And McManus having to steer it away. Well, you can see how eager Hearts are to try and win this game. Didn't even kick the ball out when one of their own men is lying on the floor there. Rarely had the chance to kick the ball out. Opted for a switch of play. A slight twist of the ankle, I think, there. Again, it shows the eagerness of Hearts to try and get forward. Yes, his uh, teammates weren't about to stop. Sorry, Ibrahim, we're on our way towards goal. And he does need some treatment in. It doesn't really look that good for Ibrahim Tal. They do have Robbie Nelson on the bench, of course. Looks like he just caught his ankle there and twisted his knee. Never looks good when you have to go for a stretcher. So a concern here for Valdas Ivanauskas. Ibrahim Tal had scored in both uh, Hearts matches at Murrayfield and Robbie Nilsson is going to have to come on. No doubt a bit miffed at uh, being left out of the starting lineup today, but he's coming on to make a significant contribution. Absolutely, I don't think he was too happy about take, being taken off in midweek. In comes the corner and Bednar's header doesn't find a way to go. Was Bednar again causing the problems for Celtic? He actually had a lot more time there than he thought he did. We expect him to do a lot better than that. A rousing reception for Robbie Nilsson as he takes the place of Ibrahim Tal. You, you do worry whether that might be a twist or even maybe ligament damage for the Senegalese international. I didn't quite understand the thinking of dropping both fullbacks. Normally a midfield player would be rested, but to drop both fullbacks I think is a strange one. That's a foul by Caldwell on Bednar. There's Hart up the ante here with a free kick. Yeah, it's a poor tackle from Caldwell. All he has to do there is stand up and be strong. And Bednar needed in there, along with Presley and Berra. Bruno Aguiar, though, is going to go for goal and uh, wasn't too close to it. No, I think that's far too ambitious. French football continues today at 4.30 on Satana Sports 1 with Sedan against Marseille. And Gretna against Derry City. Gretna in Europe. You can see them at Fir Park, Thursday, 7.30, Satanta Sports 1. Gidi now for Wilson. McManus up towards Zirasky. Petrov latches onto it. And Nakamura's going to get a corner off Wallace. Hope here for Celtic. certainly know about the threat Stephen McManus could provide in these situations. Wearing the captain's armband again today with Neil Lennon on the bench. Nakamura delivers, and it was Yuri Yarashik with the flick on. Yeah, 
Yeah, I just wonder if it's an area that Gordon Strachan has been looking at last week. Hearts lost a bad goal from a corner. Christie lost the first header. And then Aguiar knocks the ball into his own goal. So maybe Gordon Strachan does think there's a, a slight weakness in there for cross balls. Well, Hearts certainly offering more in the way of attempts on goal in this first half. Akili has trickled out. Akilunis will leave it for the newly arrived Nielsen, who has potential for a long Nielsen really launched it, and McManus met it. Could be more of the same here, though. Police protection at the moment, over there, Robbie Nielsen. Give a throw. Wallace. Caldwell challenges Post Brazil. It's bubbled off Nakamura. Brelier. Last time round, Daguerre elected to shoot. I don't think that's going to happen this time. <laughs> the spot's on there. Aguiar doesn't clear the first hurdle, which was Telfer. Nielsen. Over towards Michelinus. Up against McGeady. Did well, Michelinus. Rather better than Brellier did there. Here's Petrov, and uh, Stuart Dougal needs to work on his touch a bit. McCann. That's Boris's ball. Yeah, Hearts have had some really good opportunities to, to get good quality ball in the box. I'm sure even Eiskis is upset because the quality of the passing in the final third hasn't been the best. And again, we'll probably hark back this a number of times in this game, but with the lack of Paul Hartley, that type of ball that we've seen from Aguiar isn't working. And Hartley, of course, a, a master at free kicks. Brilliant. Petrov. Aguiar trying to rescue it. It's Nakamura. Wayward. It's first real chance Celtic have had to really go at the heart of the Tyne Castle defence. He just screwed that one left there, but I think that uh, it's important that when Celtic do go forward, they don't always look to try and go too centrally. Zaraski made a very good run wide on the left hand side, and Miller, of course, always living on the edge. We do hear from the dressing rooms that Ibrahim Tal has knee ligament damage. Just as Hearts were building up their squad nicely. Caldwell skipping away from Bednar. And that will be a blow for Hearts because if you want to double up all over the pitch, especially with the the thought of getting into the Champions League. But they do have Thiago Costa, they've just signed, that can also play in that right back there. There's Wallace. Foul by Miller. Had a bit to say about it. I think a little bit of frustration there, Ian, that he's not managed to get himself into the game yet. Another free kick then for Bruno Aguiar. And again, it's cleared by Telfer. Just like the last one was, I believe. Mikelunas. 
Brilliant. Animated there, Valdez <laughs> Ivanauskas. Cross Brazil. Might be more animated if something comes of this, but McCann's cross is collected by Bollocks. Up to this point, Hearts definitely have had the better of the match. Been impressed by the way that they've circulated the ball wide. They've got into good areas, but just as I said already, the final pass. Petrov, who you uh, would presume might well be a target for Aston Villa now. Fifty-fifty on possession. Nakamura catching out Hearts. Brelia recovered though. Well, Brelia recovering from his own mistake there. A very slack pass. It was back to the Celtic players. I think Gordon Stratton will be upset that he didn't get more out of that. McManus. Telfer. Yarrowship. Craig Gordon, Scotland's number one in the Football Writers' Player of the Year last season. An outstanding goalkeeper. Yeah, it's a pretty daunting prospect to get past Aguiar and Brelli and then the back four of Hearts, and then you have him to face. McManus clattering into Bednar. And Dutch Stuart Dougal wants a word. Stephen McManus, who didn't make the uh, Scotland get together later this month. Presley. Find his fellow centre half there, but here's McCann. Nobody really with him there. And Nakamura has won it back. Nakamura's going to get a free kick now. Yeah, McCann was looking for a little bit of support there. There was no one with real desire to get behind him and support him. Nakamura doing a good job in defence as both he and McGeady will have to do today. Well, to select your man of the match later, ring at one of those numbers, and if your choice agrees with Scott's, you'll end up winning a signed shirt if you're picked out as the winner. Nakamura for Yarishin. Petrov is hobbling at the moment. McManus. Petrov struggling for Celtic. Wallace sets up Gordon for a clearance. No, it doesn't look too comfortable, Stinian Petrov. Still at Celtic, despite all the speculation and reported interest from down south. But will he be at Celtic for that much longer? Will he be taking part in this game for that much longer? Yeah, it looks like he's just taken a, a kick on the knee, either that or a slight twist. But I'm sure he'll give it another five minutes or so until half time. Wilson. 
Nagini chasing this. Be interesting to see if the boys in the studio think that Kenny Miller is 100% fit today. It's been a little bit quiet today, and I think at times it's looked like he has been controlling his sprint action. I don't know if that's going to be the case or not, but um, they certainly don't want to lose him at this stage in the season. Cornwell won that. Wallace preferred to Fisas at left back. Here's Brellier. Nilsson, who's come on to the injured Tal, who not only has knee ligament damage, but also an ankle problem as well. We now here. Nicoludis. Gidi with a chance to have a run, held up temporarily by Brelier. Here's Zuraski. Telfer arrives on the scene. Gidi lets it go to Kenny Miller. And Gordon makes the save. Yeah, it was a good effort from Kenny Miller. Celtic on the counter attack. It was a little step over from Zuraski. Kenny Miller trying to get that ball curled round back corner of Craig Gordon but I think it, it was a warning from Michael Younes he had good possession up near the Celtic box and gave it away far too easily and then Celtic go and attack and get a real chance Zaraski Telfer Telfer certainly gave uh, Petron a problem. And Celtic could have more problems here. Nicolunas for Pospisil. He can force to go rather wider than he would have wished. But he has got support this time from Lee Wallace. It's bounced off Yarashik, but it comes to Brelier, and Manus charged out to clear. Again, in the same problem, the final pass. Hearts get themselves into a very good area. Nagiri. I think uh, Stuart Dougal was about to blow for a Celtic free kick there, but let it go. Now there's a Hearts man down there in Brelliet. He's had to stop it. Yeah, this is nothing new to, to Brelli, but just getting caught there with the left elbow. From Magidi, a little bit cheeky, I think. Oh, Gordon Strachan and John McGlynn and Gary Pendry are getting involved, and Stuart Dougal is going to be called over here to sort it out. John McGlynn with plenty to say. And presumably, it was that uh, incident involving Brelier that. Uh, Certainly got John McGlynn like that. Callum Murray, the fourth official today. Explaining what went on. It was certainly quite a spat. Ironically, uh, Strachan and uh, even Asker have been having a smile a moment ago, but Gordon Strachan now has been ordered off, and so too John McGlynn. And it all boils over. On the touchline, as McGlynn and Strachan are ordered upstairs. Yeah, I'm pretty sad, Ian, I think, that this is the, the highlight of a first half we were hoping so much from. Well, they might need separating on the walk up the stairs. John McGlynn and uh, Gordon Strachan. Brelier is OK anyway. I can't imagine there will be too many spare seats upstairs either. Somebody might get booted out. Oh, 
last minute of uh, well, it's been a, a right old scrap really between the top two teams from last season I think uh, Messrs McGlynn and Strachan will bother going upstairs just yet with half time approaching but we have both been ordered out of the dugout I think it's a game that's never really got going. I think that even now will be the most disappointed that he hasn't got more out of the situations that they've created in this game. And Celtic have a free kick on the stroke of half time. Two minutes to be added on. We're in them now. This will be some time to score for Celtic. Nakamura standing over it. What can Celtic offer here? Nakamura delivers and Stephen Presley on the end of it. That's a big header. Last thing that Hearts will want to do is to lose a goal at this stage in the first half. Wilson, Telfer's going to have a lash, caught it well enough. But always going wide. And the man who played for Gordon Strachan at Coventry, at Southampton, and now at Celtic. Dougal's got the whistle in his mouth. Ready to blow any second, but maybe time for Hearts. Hands cross is cleared. Well, it has been a largely scrappy affair. Stuart Dougal's been kept busy, mind you. Hearts have looked the more likely, although only just. And Gordon Strachan and John McGlynn have been sent from the dugout. We'll hear what Paul Hartley and Craig Burley think of it next with Rob. Nil nil at the break. The game at all, who were their movement was great against Kilmarnock last weekend, but Zoravsky and Miller haven't really had any service. We haven't really seen Nakamura making things tick as we know. We haven't seen Yarisic really getting forward. Petrov took a knock in the first half, so I mean it's a phrase used far too much. The game needs a goal, but my goodness, this 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 game does need a goal. It does need something to spark it into life. Well, depleted resources in the technical area, both uh, teams are one man down with Strachan and McGlynn up in the stand. Valdas Ivanauskas is still there and uh, Gary Pendry will be carrying out the instructions on the opposite side. Still 22 on the pitch though, what can they come up with in this second half? Hopefully better than the first. Back to Scott, back to Ian. Well, amazingly, Hearts went through the whole of last season without conceding a first half goal in the SPL at home. We have at least maintained that record so far this season. John McGlynn taking his seat upstairs then. Walter Strachan also in the director's box now. But there hasn't really been a proper good chance in the game, which hasn't lived up to the billing yet, but no two halves are the same. Maybe both are saving themselves for this second half. Yeah, I'm just wondering, Ian, how long it's going to take for Hearts to change things about. I think the guys in the studio got it right. I think Callum Elliott will come back into things. Nakamura. Zarafsky. Here's McGeady. Gideon again, away by Presley. Brilliant. And Yarosik is going to get a yellow card for that top. Well, 
Well, that matches them up because Brelli has also got a yellow card from earlier in the game. Just a slight tug, but I think Brelli goes down a little bit too easily, easily there. But I think that it, it's going to be interesting because for Celtic, they really have no recognised striker on the bench if Strachan wants to change things, so he hasn't got too many options in that department. Well, he's in uh, touch with Gary Tendry on the bench. Uh, he's sitting just a couple of rows behind uh, John McGlynn now, as we saw. There's Tommy Burns, in fact, he's on the other end. He's run into Petrov, rescued by Brelier, now McCann. Bednar's gone outside of him. Here he is, Roman Bednar. Julian Brelier. won the Scottish Cup and finished runners-up last season. George Burley and Graham Riggs did their bit. Aldous Ivanauskas topped it all off. I think we are just running out of ideas there, but I'm sure that Ivanauskas will be looking to Neil McCann to have a little bit more influence in this game. With Paul Hartley being out, it's important that other players do take the responsibility on to create things. Telfer has stepped in front of uh, McCann, but Aguiar looking to set something up for Hearts. Bednar! And Roman Bednar so close to the game's opening goal. Well, at last, Aguiar does get clear of his, his marker and sends a great ball in. Good timing of the run from Bednar, and he's very disappointed. Has a, a kick out at the post because he knows that's a real chance. The first good chance for Hearts in the game. And really, at this point in time, it should be 1-0 Hearts. Well, he scored in the uh, first two games of the season, the first leg against Siroki Brieg, and also at Dunfermline last week. Should have had one there this week. Still might. Bettner bearing down on goal. The angle's acute. But he scores anyway. Robert Bettner and Hearts are ahead. Showdown at Tynecastle. Well, Ian, he has looked the most dangerous player out on this field. He's come close two or three times today, and this time, look at the timing of the run. He's never offside, and then he drives in at Boric. Lots of composure shown with his left foot. He could have tried to take it onto his right side, but no, very confident to take it with his left side. And that's a great strike into the back corner of the net. Leaves no chance for Boric, nice and low, in off the post, 1-0 Hearts. Three goals in four games for Roman Bednar this season. Should have scored with that header, but it didn't take him long to make amends. And the Jambos are ahead against the champions. Been the player in that's shown real desire in this game to get forward and to get on the end of things, and that's what you get. Wilson's cross away by Berra, then by Aguiar, and Mark Wilson is going to be summoned here to Stuart Dougal. And he's going to get a yellow card, I don't think he'll complain too much about that. Yeah, I think Wilson will accept the yellow card for this. That's what you call a, a good foul in that. If Mikulianis gets the ball between his legs there and carries on, Celtic under even more pressure. Well, the uh, second half has certainly proved to be lively. After the first half, in which Gordon Strachan and John McGlynn grabbed the headlines, really, for being ordered out of the dugout. What does Gordon Strachan do, does he? Well, he might be all right here because Stylian Petrov has snatched it away from Hearts and here's Zerashki. And Lee Wallace got back to intervene.
Well, he did there what Bednar didn't do. He tried to check inside. It was one touch too many. You don't get many chances against the Hearts defence. It's very, very secure. You've got to put that down as a, a good goal-scoring opportunity. Cross Brazil. Jarosic makes the challenge. Goal kick. Yeah, I was going to say, what does Gordon Strachan do? Because does he bring in Lennon? Does he bring him back into the game? I don't think so. He's looking more to try and get some more pressure higher up the field. Maybe it's a chance to bring Warden into things on the left-hand side. McKeady's, McKeady's gone on that little bit quiet. And maybe Gordon Strachan will have to freshen things up in the next five or ten minutes. themselves in midweek to Bosnia. Huge kick there, and Bednar's in the hunt again. The uh, kick to Bosnia grueling for Hearts, whereas uh, not many of these Celtic players made the journey to Japan. That's Nakamura and Magidi. It was a long trip with a good outcome. Sets them up nicely for Athens in midweek. But I think that uh, at the moment, it's so early in the season, I don't think it's too much of a problem to have players travelling halfway around the world. Bednar's going to show interest in that, and McManus just tipped him to it, but here's McCann. Well, Celtic have won on 11 of their last 14 visits here to Tyne Castle. Hearts are going to have to fare better against the old firm to maintain a serious title challenge this season. They are believers. Celtic have come back here before. The New Year's Day game was a perfect example of that. They won't give up. They'll keep plugging away and try and break down a very, very strong Hearts defence. Zarafsky. Trying to find Miller. Zarafsky again. Stephen Presley keeps him occupied. Kenny Miller's taken a knock, and Stylian Petrov lunges in. And Kenny Miller's not looking uh, too comfortable, had that niggly hamstring that meant he didn't play in Japan. I think the, the goal came from Gary Caldwell's area of the park on Bednar. It was a good run from Bednar, but it's something you would feel that Caldwell should be able to handle. And he has come under some sort of criticism since the start of the season for his defensive lapses. Be interesting to see what the, the guys in the studio make after the game of that one. Many a uh, heart scarf being waved around Tynecastle at the moment. It may be early season, but a victory over Celtic over the champions would be colossal. Long way to go yet, mind you, and Celtic were 2-0 down here on New Year's Day and still won. Cordwell dealing with Pospazil. Wallace has got the better of Nakamura. Pospazil, Wallace again. Bednar. Michelunas. His touch allowed Nakamura to steal in for Celtic. And here's Aidan McGeady. McGeady taking on Hart. A powerful surge, but Mark Wilson's cross, miserable. Yeah, it was much better from Aidan McGeady. Dropping that bit deeper, trying to get involved in the game. He did that also in midweek against Yokohama. He did drop deep, likes to be involved in the game, and it's good. Such a young player does take responsibility on. Not one of Mark Wilson's better crosses. Bobby Nelson, who came on in the first half for the injured Ibrahim Tal. The news not good on him. Knee and ankle damage. Apart from that, it is uh, good news for Hearts at the moment. 
Free kick for Brilliant. As he collided with Yarashik. Neil Lennon, the skipper, warming up for Celtic. Neil McCann ready to deliver. Or maybe even ready to have a go. McCann does float it in. It's McManus who stood it away. And Brunier with a real test for Boris. What a great effort this is from Brelli. Close to his weaker foot. It's coming down a long way. Great technique, gets his head over the ball. And a fantastic save from Boric. Well, this match has certainly taken off in the second half after a largely forgettable first 45 minutes. It's been pretty much non-stop since the whistle went. It's maybe no coincidence, though, that with Hearts being such a defensively strong team, that it's been very difficult today for Petrov and for Yarasic to get good possession of the ball. Maybe Nelson dug that one out, but here is Yarasic. Magidi feeding on the scraps. Turned away by Lee Wallace, but Zaraski will get to it. Telfer doesn't hang around. Nelson being chased by Tospazil. I'm just wondering if Petrov is still struggling that little bit from the knock he took in the first half. Just wondering if he will be the man that will be changed. Yeah, grimacing at the moment, Petrov. He's not quite managed to get going in this game today. Certainly not anywhere near the difference they made last week against Kilmarnock with Jarosic and Petrov making different runs, causing problems in the Kilmarnock midfield. Not quite the same today with Brelli and Aguiar at the back. Well, there's good speculation about Petrov's future. And Stephen Pearson behind uh, Tommy Burns there. Continually linked with the move to uh, join Billy Davis, his former, former world manager at Derby. Closing down Wilson. He's got Michalunas nearby and also Aguiar. It's away by McManus. Yeah, it's a great ball from Aguiar. For being physical midfield players, both Brelli and Aguiar do have a good touch. They're not frightened to play balls like that in. Nilsson's long throw. Hart's looking fairly comfortable at the moment, Ian, I'm just going to wonder how long it will take before Gordon does make the change for Celtic, certainly before they, they lose a second goal. Well, that doesn't bear thinking of for Celtic fans, I'm sure. Going two down here. McCann unable to feed Bednar. Like uh, Chesnowskis will be uh, on very, very soon. Normally, uh, it's over with uh, Nicolunas. Here is Aguiar. And here is Neil McCann who's going to come off. Wallace. Neil McCann finally getting to play at Tynecastle in his second spell at Hearts. Injured on his uh, return to the club back in January. Nielsen. 
Horrocks gathers and feeds McGeady and he'll be on his way quite sharpish. Yarashev. Zaraski. Yarashik again. Closely watched by Brelier. And Brelier's won it back fair and square. This could be ominous for Celtic. Pospisil and Bednar ahead, offside. Flags up, not going to count for Roman Bednar. Oh, I don't know about that one, Ian. Can't wait to see that one again. Oh, he's definitely not offside. It always looked onside to me. Another great run from Bednar. Fantastic finish too. What a let-off for Celtic. And Neil McCann is leading us to be replaced by the Lithuanian David Ash Chesnowskis. So there'll be a Lithuanian on either side, either flank now perhaps. Yeah, McCann won't be too disappointed again taking off, he's just coming back from a long-term injury. If he gets all three points, I'm sure he'll be pretty happy. That just shows you the negative side of playing Juricic and Petrov in midfield. Juricic losing the ball there, straight away a counter-attack, it was three for three at the back with Celtic. And Bednar should have had two. Well, if uh, Celtic get something out of this game, there will be uh, plenty said about that decision. Bednar clearly onside. But not in the view of the assistant referee, Gary Cheng. Huge decision that. Still only 1-0 to Hearts. Mark Wilson. Petrov has lost it. Yeah, maybe that's the worry for Gordon Strap in the midfield, and that's why Neil Lennon is coming back into it. Far too much. Far too much times now, and then far too many times now in the midfield have Yarosic and Petrov given away possession. Because Nauskis uh, has earned parts of corner. Neil Lennon is going to be coming on for Kenny Miller. My word is from the bench. But there's a corner for Celtic to defend first. Hearts are hungry. Should have been allowed a second goal. We'll have another try at getting it anyway. Aguas cross. A mistake. Chesnowskis could see Celtic break out. Nakamura for Miller. Now McGeady. And it's inside towards Petrov! What a finish! What a finish from Stylian Petrov! And the move was magnificent too. How costly it proved for Hearts. But the champions level it up just like that. That is an absolutely incredible goal. Fantastic goal. Classic counter-attack. Look how many Celtic men are going forward. All with real desire to get in the box. It's Petrov who gets on the end of it. And that is a finish from the top drawer. Absolutely brilliant. McGeady chooses his time right. And that's first time with a left foot. Absolutely no chance for Craig Gordon. And that's Celtic right back in the game. Oh, I bet there were a few Celtic fans grumbling about Petrov's performance today as well. But his last six goals against Hearts have all come here at Tynecastle. And now that decision that went against Roman Bednar Looks an even bigger call from the assistant referee. And Lennon's substitution is back on hold. Well, there's been a substitution can go wrong, Ian. Chesnowsk is coming on the park, giving the ball away, one of his first touches. Here's Michalunis, though. Aguiar. Well, after that uh, Hearts corner, it took Celtic just 17 seconds to speed up the other end and score a cracker. It's going to be interesting to see what Gordon Strachan does as he pushed Petrov up. 
alongside Zerevsky, or does he take McGeady in from the left-hand side? I think after that finish, I know what I would do. Well, substitution back on, Kenny Miller. It's a quiet uh, afternoon, back in Edinburgh, where his career began with Hibs. He's going off, Miller, and Neil Lennon, the captain, comes on. Yeah, we can see that Petrov is going to push up, I think, next to Zerevsky. Neil Lennon will go into his normal position. It's not too bad, although they didn't have anyone on the bench to take on as a striker. Petrov's not too bad up there, is he? Petrov. Quarter of the game to go. It's been a captivating second half after a forgettable first half. Hearts paying big time for Chesnowski's giving it away. Just after Ivanowski's had thrown him off. Here's Petrov again. Nakamura, who's going to have support from Telfer. Now Telfer gets it from McManus. Suddenly they're in Celtic look, eager again, springing their step. I think you'll see Petrov just sitting off Sadaski at times, just trying to cause a problem for Vera and Presley, the centre of the Hearts defence. Top two from last season in the SPL, locked together at 1-1 at Tynecastle. Isn't that interesting how that thing can happen in football? Could have been 2-0 for Hearts, Bednar getting a goal chopped off that was definitely onside. A few minutes later, Celtic go up the park and even things up. I suspect uh, Valdis Ivanauskas will have a bit to say about that decision. Hey. There's going to be a card here for Gary Caldwell. Even a few Edinburgh derbies in his time. He's going to be the... Uh, oh, he's been let off a car, just given a warning. Aguiar pings it in, everyone left it. Just over 20 minutes remaining, coming up to the time where you can vote for your man of the match on those numbers. And if your choice agrees with Scott Booth and you're picked out, you will win a signed shirt of the name player, Roman Bednar and Stylian Petrov, the goal scorers. Going to be the man of the match. Just shows you just said that Petrov had gone quiet in the game and then bang. Petrov. Oh, it's deflected. But Trey Gordon's behind it. Looks like Stephen Presley took a sore one there as well. Just a slight deflection any more, though, and it could have been a big problem for Craig Gordon. Well, they'll be hoping Stephen Presley's OK ahead of that uh, clash with A.K. Evans, having already lost Ibrahim Tal to what looks like a serious injury today. How about this, though, for a massive decision, a wrong decision. That's exactly what strikers are working on, day in, day out in training, they're working on the timing of that run across the face of a defender, and then he gets given offside. And then Petrov smashes in an equaliser. And that is just sheer quality, with his left foot, not even thinking about it, completely instinctive. Substitution for Celtic after 70 minutes leading the field. Stephen Pearson, he's going to take the Nakamura. place of Shinsuke Nakamura. He's had a busy week, of course, 
Went back to his homeland to play his former club, Yokohama. But certainly going to offer Celtic more drive in the wider areas. Likes to get on the end of things as well, Pearson. Well, it was Pearson who sparked uh, that Celtic recovery here on New Year's Day last season. With the first of their three goals. Billy Davis keen to take him to Derby, but he remains at Celtic for the time being. On the fringe of things, normally, but not for the next 18-19 minutes. One of these now, though, Ian. Do teams set, do they settle for a, a point, a share of the spoils? Or do they try to go out and take all three? Stephen Presley's back on. Hearts and Celtic face the current top two next week. Celtic home to St Mirren, Hearts meet Hawker. Second half has certainly been intriguing. What's going to happen next? As we can see already in Neil Lennon getting on the ball very easily. It's very difficult for Aguiar to get himself out of his defensive midfield position and get right up close to Neil Lennon, so he should be on the ball quite a lot over the next 20 minutes. Telfer. On by Yarashik and Presley guiding it back to Gordon. The French League continues on September Sports 1 at 4.30 with Sedan against Marseille. And Gretna hit Europe on Thursday night, 7.30 from Fir Park, September Sports 1. It's their qualifier against Derry City. Michelunas. Chisnauskis, Nikolunas, the Lithuanians combined, what a cross! And Boris got an important touch, with Bednar coming in and Pospisil lurking too. That yeah, was great play on the right-hand side between the Lithuanians. Fantastic ball in, gave Boris a real problem. To see cuts to the side, nice little pass with the outside of the right foot, first time cross, a good hand from Boric. Petrov now for Magidi. Still a bundle of energy and he's kept that in. Lee Wallace has sorted him out. And that'll be a... I thought he was going to blow for the free kick, Stuart Dougal, but he let it go. Lennon now for Yarosik. Side. Oh, it's gone between uh, Chesnowskis and Bednar. Maybe the wrong decision that time. If he did make a run, I think Mark Wilson did well by tucking in on the left hand side. Pearson. Yarashit. Pearson again. Petrov. Why this time with Stylian Petrov? Suddenly Petrov looks really hungry in this game, and that's what Pearson gives you, driving forward. Good vision to see Petrov. Takes it on to his left foot, he's not scared to go either left or right. Pearson. 
Here's Yarashek. Oh, it's Christoph Ferra who nipped across to clear it. And that could have been a real chance if either Zarajski or Petrov had decided they wanted the ball, left it for each other. Already this left-hand side for Celtic looking more dangerous with Pearson on the pitch. Wilson. There is Pearson. Neil Lennon's kept that in, but only just. Yarosik. Zaraski. Petrov. No foul. As Aguiar made the challenge. That was good play by Zaraski. He's looking for the one-two of Petrov there. Doesn't quite get it. He made the right run. Pospisil was closely shadowed by Gary Caldwell and Celtic get a throw and Pospisil kicks it away in frustration. Lennon. Lennon was left grounded then by uh, Bednar. Alpha has to go back to Cornwell. Wilson. Petrov for Yarosin. Nikolunas. Pospisil. Tense times at Tyne Castle. Pospisil has worked his socks off today, in. I just wonder though if he may be the man that will come off and allow some fresh legs up front. Lee Wallace is advancing. It's actually gone. Sort its way. with a lot of the ball in the last quarter of an hour. And an equaliser as well from Petrov. Here's Brillier, though. Plenty of power not quite matched by the position. Yeah, but it was good play by Brellier and Aguiar. We nutmeg, tries to go for the first-time shot. Very tender. Burns alone on the uh, in the technical area now with Gordon Strachan sent upstairs in the first half along with John McGlynn after a bit of a spat that was actually the highlight of the first half but there's been a few more highlights in the second half that's for sure he did a few rows between them Powered away by McManus, it comes to Vera. In the early part of the second half, it looked like Hearts had got to grips with things. Celtic could come back into it now, and it's fairly even at the moment. And we are setting up Michalunas. McManus posting that one out. Inside the last ten minutes of a crucial game, so early in the season. Mikalunis. Boric right behind that. Tipton. 
first meeting between these teams last season ended 1-1, that was at Celtic Park. Stopped Hearts a winning streak at the time. Nicolinis. Wilson stuck with him. Hearts throw. Robbie Nielsen in towards Bednar. Yarosik was keeping him in check. Julian Breliet bounced off Gary Colburn. That's uh, going to bring on their Finnish striker, Juho Michaela. Lennon holding off Nicolunas. Brazil is going to be replaced then, and on comes Michaela. They had a terrific goal-scoring record with HJK Helsinki. Hasn't really got his heart's career going yet, but might do one day soon. Yeah, it's like for like Michaela. Quite similar to Pospisil, maybe a little bit more pace than Pospisil has. And certainly at this point in the game, fresh legs up front for Hearts. He certainly needed. Kesnowskis. Michaela would have been offside anyway had that uh, threatened a goal. So, vote for your man of the match now by ringing the appropriate number, whether you're in the UK or the Republic of Ireland. And if your choice matches Scott Boo's pick, and you are picked out, you get a signed shirt from the man of the match. Be a gripping finale. But Manus won that. Here's Aguiar. It's been a strange game for Craig Gordon and goal for Hearts. Ian, he's not really had to do anything in the game apart from take the ball out of his net. his throw towards Michaela. Yarosik came off worse there. Celtic had a throw. Craig Brewster has done the United. Picked up a surprise point at Ibrox yesterday and might have had more 2 0 up. The Gwen's men saved the day with an OG. I think if things stay this way, it will be Gordon Strachan, who's the happier of the two managers. Certainly when you take into account, most of the pressure has come from Hearts, or certainly the chances. Nielsen has picked out Bednar, Michaela! Gary Corbett in the way, not that it had too much power anyway from Michaela. Here's Michaelunas. Chesnowskis. And it sticks with Boris. Pearson shut off by Brelliet. And even Iskis was again irate on the side there because he knows they've had chances in this game, they've had the pressure. The final ball at times let them down, and here we go again. Initially, good play, but just a little bit of composure would have been a little bit better to have gone right to the byline and cut the ball back, maybe lifted his head. Easy in the end for Boric. Very aimless from uh, Boric. Who offered a quick apology and no wonder. Hey. 
Nagini. Petrov bounced off Berra. Rescued by Telfer. Cut out by Lennon. Important intervention. And by Caldwell. And Lennon's pass. And Bednar's going to get in. Neil Lennon's error. And Roman Bednar may well have won the game for Hearts. A crucial goal in a vital game. First and foremost, it's a fantastic finish from Bedna. He really has shown desire the whole game. But again, Lennon just doesn't look, doesn't catch it right. Bedna quickly onto it. He's still got a lot to do, it's on his left foot. But just look at the composure shown. Takes a little look up, side foots it into the back of the net. Could have been his hat trick. Well, Hearts will feel that justice has been done after that goal that was ruled out for Bednar. Neil Lennon, who's done so much for Celtic, has to take the blame for that one. A late, late goal. Not much time for Celtic to recover from that. Neil Lennon so reliable for Celtic over the years. Been a fantastic player for them. But sometimes these things happen. You have to give credit to Bednar. He was watching for it, he was looking for it. He picked the ball up. And from then on, there was only one outcome today. Well, the second half has been everything the first half wasn't, but uh, Gordon Strachan can't really account for a mistake like that from his captain. Heading towards the last minute of normal time. Neil Lennon needs someone to bail him out. And Roman Bednar has four goals already this season. Yeah, it's a great start for him. And he has looked the most dangerous player today. Certainly deserves his two goals. As I say, it could have been a hat-trick. Celtic have to come back again, but they haven't got much time left. McManus launching it. Petrov, the furthest man forward. Telfer getting ready to take this throw. Can Celtic save the day at Tynecastle? Stephen McManus scored two late goals here on New Year's Day. Telfer's long throw. Oh, it nearly dropped for Lennon. Now that could have been some story. And Lennon bumped on his backside by Czesnowski's challenge. It's going to be good work rate being shown by Czesnowski to get himself back in there at an important time. It's going to be three minutes added on. Celtic could have done with a little bit more unless they can find a way to go here. Telfer's cross easily cleared by Stephen Presley. Czesnowski has taken it off Telfer. Bednar. Four out of two, denied one, unable to turn provider for Michaela. But hearts are nearly there, and it shows. Bednar giving the fans the thumbs up. Denied a hat trick by that offside shout, but will happily settle for a double if it results in a result for Hearts. A 
AEK Athens next up for Hearts. Can they see it out against Celtic? McGeady, Pearson. Presley determined to get to it so much so he probably would have taken out his own man bearer. Lennon has spun away from Brelier. Here's Petrov on quickly. Gets it back from Zaraski. Petrov. Held up by Mikalunas. Mikalunas able to clear and Hearts are a minute away from a telling victory over the champions. Seconds tick agonisingly away for Celtic. Pulled well. Oh, Brelier just about hung in there. Here's Aguiar. If they keep the ball now, it should be a victory. It's a free kick anyway. And it's been a wretched few minutes for Neil Lennon on as a sub. I think both Aguiar and Brelli have done well in there today. Not just try to do a job in defence by protecting their defence, they've also tried to get themselves forward at times. Stuart Dougal has had a look at his watch. Aguiar now. He's gone for it! On the side of the bar, Michaela! Absolute stunner, but it's over anyway. Hearts have beaten Celtic. A victory of great importance and huge significance, even though it comes so early in the season. They were a goal to the good through Roman Bednar. Got caught, but they gave the ball away, and Petrov smashed in an equaliser. But Bednar latched on to an error from Neil Lennon, of all people, to win the game for Hearts, and he should have had a hat-trick, really. An offside goal wrongly ruled out, and a big, big win in a big, big game for Valdez Ivanauskas and Hearts. Yeah, Hearts definitely deserve the victory today. The routine that showed that bit more desire, they had the chances. It looked like early on they might not get the goal. They did get the goal through Bednar. He should have had three today, but fantastic finishing from him. And a sweet revenge for the Hearts players and the Hearts fans after the New Year's Day clash of last season. Well, Hearts, if they are to mount a serious title challenge, know they've got to get more out of their matches against the Old Firm. They've certainly started in the right vein. It may have taken a mistake from Neil Lennon to hand them three points, but few would deny that this was a worthy victory for Hearts. Certainly better at the moment, top man. It's a great run across the defender. Just keeps his head down, picks out the back corner, no chance for Boric. And even Ice is absolutely delighted. That was the first and a sheer moment of brilliance from Stylian Petrov. Gordon Strachan can't believe the finish. It brought Celtic right back in the game. Lennon, too weak on the pass, didn't look up, didn't lift his head, but Bednar did. Strokes the ball into the empty net, and again, even Ouskis, absolutely delighted. Bednar could have had his hat-trick, but he get all three points instead. Remember New Year's Day, payback time. Hearts have beaten the champions 2-1. Proud sponsors of SPL Live. Never a dull day at Tancastle, despite what you may have seen in a disappointing first half, in which the highlights took place off the pitch. Gordon Strachan was snarling. John McGlynn wasn't too happy either. Toe to toe with Gary Pendry. Strachan ordered out of the technical area as the first half came to a close and McGlynn joined him in the director's box. Things opened up on the pitch in the second half and Roman Bednar played in, finishing expertly for 1-0 Hearts. That pleased Valdas. 
This didn't. Officialdom getting it badly wrong. Bednar was very much onside, and that should have been 2 0 Hearts, but it wasn't given offside, and our pictures clearly show he was on. Hearts on the attack, and very quickly, Celtic outfield a flowing counter move this, and what a finish from Stylian Petrov. And that was 1 1, and Hearts feeling sore. They felt they should have been two up Gordon Strachan, delighted to be back on level terms from his director's box viewpoint. A blunder from Neil Lennon left out of the starting lineup, and his major contribution was to set up Roman Bednar for his second goal of the game. It could have been a hat trick, but that was enough to give Hearts a momentous victory at Tynecastle. And Neil Lennon's expression tells all at the end. What a contrast! Let's hear from the man of the match now, not surprisingly, Roman Bednar scored two, should have been three. He's with the Hearts captain, Stephen Presley, both talking to Stuart Lovell. Roman, a difficult match for you today. You must be pleased with the win. Oh, of course, you know, we, before game we wanted three points and we did the hard work, you know, and everybody and we scored two goals in Celtic 1 and we win. I think we deserve it today. All of Hart's chances seem to fall to you. Were you disappointed not to score more than two goals? Of course, you know, I, I, I can help uh, earlier, you know, when I, if I score, you know, we may be a little bit better game for us, not so difficult like this, but, you know, some some chances don't score, some, some score, you know, I'm happy it's finished like this. And just after you scored your first goal, you had a goal disallowed for offside, which was onside. Did you think you were onside? Are you disappointed that that goal was was called out? Oh, I don't know. It was very fast, you know. But I speak with Julian because he, I think, gave pass, and he said it's never offside. Well, uh, Stephen, what message does this send out to other teams in the league? It sends out a big message, you know. I think uh, we've started the season in great, great form. You know, we've progressed in the Champions League and won our first two league games, so we're very satisfied with that. And on to AEK Athens on Wednesday. Is that a tie that you can win? Absolutely. There's no doubt that they're the favourites at this moment in time, but uh, we have a great belief in our camp at this time and uh, we feel that with the right two performances we can progress. Well, well played today, guys. Uh, Roman is our Bank of Scotland man of the match. Stephen, if you could do the honours. Well done, Roman. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well played, guys. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Not much doubt in the end about the Man of the Match award. Uh, Roman Bednar thoroughly deserving of it. Good performance from him, what a promising player. And Paul Muir from Glasgow picked him out, as well as Scott Booth. And Paul's our competition winner. A signed Bednar shirt will be heading your way. So that's a big boost for Hearts heading into Europe in midweek, looking to get into the group stages of the Champions League if they can get rid of AEK Athens. That's a big ask for them, but then so was today. And uh, having been pegged back by Celtic, it says much for the strength of spirit here at Tynecastle that Hearts came through in the end. Six points out of six at the start of this SPL campaign. The champions losing out here at Tynecastle. With me in the studio, Craig Burley and uh, Hearts and Scotland midfielder Paul Hartley, who can barely wipe that smile off his face. Yeah, fantastic performance. Uh, second half performance. First half wasn't wasn't too great, but I mean, I thought we deserved the victory. Uh, two great goals for, for Roman. Not easy finishes, but I mean, I thought we deserved the three points today. And there's a feeling, I think, Craig, of justice at the end because Hearts should have been 2 0 up, and maybe at that stage, had, had it been given, it would have been game over. Well, the second half was, I mean, the first half was poor. The second half was a lot better. We said the game needed a goal, they got one in 49 minutes, Hearts, and the game progressed from there. I mean, it, it toured and froed. Both sides had their, their chances in the games, both sides had a, a period where they had their possession. Uh, but I think if you look at it in chances alone, Hearts carved out the best chances, the most chances, uh, and Bednar. Could have had could have had a hat trick today, but uh, it was a fantastic performance from him. And what? How significant is that, Paul? It's the second weekend in. We're not going to jump to too many conclusions, but psychologically, that that's a that's a big one for Hearts. It's a big test um, coming up against the, the the champions. So, I mean, it's a great start to the season for us. Six points for, for two games. So, you know, the confidence is there. Celtic sluggish, Craig. Disappointing performance from them. Well. In context of how they played last week against Kumarna as an attacking force, I think you have to say yes. I mean, Petrov scored a wonderful goal. They we'll had their moments. A bit later, but they didn't really carve Hearts open that often. And maybe that's credit to Hearts because they've been really strong at the back. 
Hearts and uh, you know Celtic just didn't get going today, uh, and f with that, they're always going to have problems at the back. I don't think they're the strongest at the back. Hearts exploited that at times, as I say, created more chances and deserved the three points. Let's hear live from the winning manager Valdas Ivanauskas with Stewart. Valdas, a very strong performance from Hearts today. You must be delighted with the win. Yes, I am I'm very happy, very happy with uh, performance. So we score, we, we play very well. Uh, we don't don't have chances for the for the Celtics so and uh, just counter attack okay it's just a great goal for Petrov but I think uh, as when is, is we uh, we need this for him and I think it's for us. Do you think it was a fair result today? I think yes. I think yes. We have a um, lot of chances and uh, think from performance from from the for the game I think it's very, for us uh, when is uh, yes. Just after Roman Bednar scored the first goal, he had a goal disallowed for offside, which was a, a goal. Um, do you think that affected your players? Mm, I think no. You know, it's just, if, if, if it uh, was not, not offside, okay, it's just maybe a mistake for for ref. But I think uh, it's for ref was you no know, easy situation. So and uh, for us, uh, it's very important for Roman. You know, he scored second goal, but uh, it's very important he 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 play he play. Way, uh, uh, after 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 second goal for him it was not easy, but okay, it's, uh, the win is very important. And you play AEK Athens on Wednesday. Will you make changes to the team for that match? Okay, we, we need waiting just for for the game. Uh, so in uh, three days, as we need we need uh, mm -hmm. looking for the our injuries for the for the uh, for the. Shit for <laughs> for the match for the match yeah so and uh, okay I think this is uh, next, uh, it's very important for the for the for the club for the players game but okay this is three days we have for the next game well that's well done today thank you very much sorry <laughs> yeah so I think there are distinct signs there that he is beginning to master the language <laughs> um, and he was very animated wasn't he in the technical area yeah, he does he's he's very passionate about the game um, he's so delighted. Um, <laughs> We won the the game today, but um, as you see, he shows his emotions on the touchline. But that's the, mo that's the most animated I've seen him. And yeah. I was quite interested to hear him. I didn't understand everything he said. But did you understand uh, that one word towards the end? Uh, yeah, it started with an S. <laughs> but I did understand one thing when he said that refs make mistakes, and he, we don't think he'd have been saying that had uh, Bednar not scored the winner. When Bednar's goal was chopped off, we'll see that a bit later on, he said, oh, referees make mistakes, but uh, it could have cost Hearts. It didn't, but uh, it was a good second half. And I think he's got to be delighted. Bear in the mind, he left out his two main full-backs. His main midfielder's not playing either, and the turnover of the champions. So we've seen him uh, jumping up and down right throughout the match, but uh, surprisingly, he was the only one who wasn't involved in this, which was the highlight of the first half, and it wasn't on the pitch. You'll not be surprised to hear it was that fracas in the technical area, which in involved Gary Pendry and Gordon Strachan. John McGlynn was there. Val Valdas was the peacemaker in the end. And the upshot was McGlynn and Strachan up to the director's box. Yeah, well, I mean, as I said at halftime, you know, it's a passionate game, and, and he, these guys are getting passionate about things that are going on. And I mean, Gordon Strachan wasn't really involved in it. It was Gary Pendry and, and John McGlynn. And Strachan and McGlynn were both sent to the stand. Now, I think the officials have got to take a bit of discretion into things here and, and realise the occasion. It's a big game against the two teams that finished first and second last season. It's early in the season. You know, they're worried about what's going on in the pitch, they're showing their emotions. We want to see that, players want to see it, fans want to see it. And to send them to the stands is a bit harsh for me and uh, there's absolutely no need. Take the heat out of the situation, give them a warning and, and that's the end of the matter. What do you reckon sparked it off, Paul? I think it was instant, I think it was Julian Braley it was, was on the deck and the referee stopped play. But, I, mean, I think the, the linesmen are the, the, the referee should just go and have a quiet word and just send them back to the dugout instead of sending them to the stand. We talk about handbags on the pitch, that was handbags off it, wasn't it? Yeah, just a bit of common sense I think you should have used. Good sign about Roman Bednar is that uh, he misses chances, uh, but it doesn't put him off going in for the next one. And, and this was a, a great opportunity from Aguiar's delivery, good one. Uh, missed the header, Bednar, but he, come, he bounces back. Yeah, well, he had a couple of these in the first half, actually, where you know there were some decent crosses. And there was only two in the first half he had where he got to say on a decent position as he, as he is there. Six yards out, he kicks the post because he's frustrated. He knows that's a good opportunity. It's a good ball in. And he, and he doesn't get a good contact on it. As I said earlier, he had two of them in the first half where he got himself in very good positions, went to head it, didn't connect. 
and again there and there. But he kept plugging away, he keeps plugging away. He worked hard. I thought his strike partner Pospisil didn't really help him out much. I have to say, I thought he was a bit of a weak link for them. But Bednar's performance, his work rate, he was a nuisance. He got himself into good goal scoring opportunities and good positions, and he got two goals. Although Pospisil did play the pass here for Bednar to net the opening goal and signs here of uh, a lack of communication about Caldwell and McManus. Well, Gary Caldwell gets dragged to the ball uh, and Bednar gets in behind him. Stephen McManus is two, two or three yards behind him, you can see here. You know, he gets dragged out to the ball, Gary Caldwell here, there's just never space. Stephen McManus can't play offside, he's too far away, he's too deep. Ball gets played in, and I have to say, from a tight angle against a very good goalkeeper, I mean, that's a, that's an excellent finish from Bednar. Yeah, terrific finish, he's a bit, a good, good movement there for the goal, he just spins wide and it's the only place you can hit it, Craig, and it hits it across the, the face of the goal, and uh, a fantastic finish. And, and I just think with, uh, you know, we've spoken about Celtic going forward, I'm sorry, but that, that back four against better opposition and against the teams like Hearts and against teams in the Champions League, you're going to get chances. I mean, you're going to get chances because they're not top quality defenders. And I think, never mind going forward today where they weren't at their best, at the back's just a constant worry. I think he's got to spend some money there or he's going to have some major problems. Julian Brillier doesn't hit the target too often with his attempts on goal. He did hear a good left foot volley and decent save from Arthur Boritz. I couldn't believe it was Julian yet. It struck that thing. He doesn't even do that in training, but when he keeps it down, that's, it. that's the first thing you're doing. And the goalkeeper's a wee bit lucky, it spills out, there's no, re no one falling in there on the, on the rebound, but a great hit for Julian, I think he had three or four efforts today, I think that was uh, his for the season. That, that's the whole quota for the rest of the season. Now here's the moment which could have cost Hearts dear, and I think the person we have to point the finger at here is Gary Cheen, the assistant referee on this side, and I, I think we all felt instinctively as the move developed here that this was onside. Well it's Jarosik that's dwelling on the ball, he gets caught, Aguar plays him in, and we'll see from the, this angle, the linesman gives offside. We'll see from this angle quite clearly, he's a yard onside. That's I mean, not it's, a big decision, it's is a, it? Listen, it's a shocking decision, it's an absolutely shocking decision. What we do is we ask the officials to get all the big decisions, try and get them correct. Now, in the context of today's game, it didn't affect it because Bednar will go on, goes on and scores another goal. But at that point in the game, you know, we're taking him to 2-0, and it's just a poor decision from the referees. and. Uh, you know, we've mentioned them all the time, but they, they, they continually get it wrong. Well, there was the wrongful sending off of Takis Fisas on New Year's mm. Day, wasn't there? Which, which, which might have had an impact on how that game developed. And, and again, Hearts fans were feeling sore there. Yeah, it could have cost us uh, three points today. And it could, it's cost uh, Roman Bednar a hat-trick. Um, he's a mile onside. And, I mean, his timing the run's and look, fantastic. And look, at, look at the position of the, the, uh, of the referee's assistant yes. here, the linesman. I mean, it's a perfect position, absolutely perfect. It's a great run. You know, the, the run is perfect, the timing of it is perfect. The, the ball's good, you know, the keeper doesn't know it's offside at this point, so he's committed, and it's a good finish, and, uh, you know, we just speak about officials, we don't want to go on about officials all the time, but, Rob, they've got to get the big decisions right, and, and that, for me, wasn't a difficult one, you know, he was absolutely if, if spot on. If it's on line, it can be a borderline decision, yeah. but that was a, a good yard, wasn't it? It was a good yard on, um, it's just incredible, he gives that offside here, it's as Craig said, the time they run, the way to the pass and the, the finish was, was And fantastic. the old conspiracy theories would be coming back out from Vladimir Roman about the refs and that, but I think you pointed it out during the game, it was your word, not mine, it was incompetence. And, and I agree with you, it is incompetence and, and you know, we're not sitting here picking holes in the officials' performances, but games like that can change a season, uh, decisions like that can change a game, can yeah, change well, a season. We talk about players not doing their job, that was an official not doing his job. Yeah. Well, we all make mistakes. We, look, get the big ones correct, you know, the vital decisions, the borderline ones, goal scoring opportunities, you have to get it right. And it didn't, it didn't affect the game, but it might have done. And of course, here's where the game turned, because Hearts, one moment, uh, had a corner kick up at one end of the pitch, and this was a classic counter attack from Celtic and dishing out severe punishment for Hearts having lost the ball upfield. Yes, our corner kick and we lose the ball in the middle of the park then, but Celtic break up very quick. And Kenny Miller just plays a wee flick there to, to make it, but I mean, fantastic finish for Petrov on his, on his weaker side, but I think he might be a wee bit disappointed. Nobody sort of matching the runner of Petrov there. But it's a, it's a great finish. I mean, it's disappointing from Hart's point of view that they're taking a corner and Celtic are scoring, but I have to say, in, in terms of a, a counter attack, it's a wonderful counter attack. Good little touch from Ken. Aidan McGeady, who I thought had a good second half come into the game, plays a nice little ball in, and I just thought the, the finish on the run with the ball in the move as well, I just thought it was a wonderful finish. I didn't think Petrov had one of his better games, 
today, nor did Jarosik in the middle of the park. I don't know how fit Petrov was because he was struggling for a while, wasn't he? He looked as if he was struggling. May went off at half time, but he didn't. But half, I mean, that, that was just a fantastic finish. And I wonder how much longer uh, Stylian Petrov will be a Celtic player. That could have been his final flourish because inevitably he'll be linked with Aston Villa and Martin O'Neill again. Yeah, the players uh, say for himself that he, that he wants to leave Celtic. And you see, with Martin O'Neill getting the Aston Villa job, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, he'll come back in from. I don't think he'll be short of offers. Well, there will be speculation, but he, he's just got to get on with his job. He's got to do his job. And I, I, I thought both himself and Yarisic didn't look the same as they did last week against Kilmarnock. And I thought Nakamura uh, didn't play much at all today. Didn't really get involved. McGarry did a better second half. And ironically, those were the two players that went to Japan and both played. And I know people will bring out the old excuse, but Hearts played in midweek as well. But they just went at the races today and uh, thought it, without Hearts having a, a breaking player from midfield, they just had two sitting players, you know, Celtic didn't really cause them many problems. It's a day Neil Lennon will want to forget. We saw his face as he came off the bus pre-match, having been left out of the starting lineup. And when he came on, this was his major contribution, a sloppy back pass in with Roman Bednar, and this was the match winner. Yeah, but Roman anticipates that, and it's, you know, he's got a lot of work to do, but I thought it was a fantastic finish. I mean, he just gets in front of Boric here, but he's still got a lot of work to do, and left foot on his, his weaker side, and he can't could, finish. And could, could Arthur Boric, the goalkeeper, well, have taken him out well, here? Well, and, if he wants and to miss a couple of games well, and get a red card, Yeah, but, but, but rescue a point. But I was looking at the centre-halves as well, you know, and, and to be fair to Neil Lennon, he doesn't make many mistakes. Now, he makes one here. Now, what Bednar does is he reacts quicker, and we can see even else, we see he's delighted. But what he does, he, re he reacts quicker in the centre halves. And sometimes you make a mistake, you're looking for your centre half or your teammate to get you out of trouble. They didn't do that. But to be fair to Bednar, he does well because, as Paul says, once he gets in there, that is still a difficult one to finish. There's a player going back onto the line, the ball's bouncing, it's near the end of the game and it's, it was a good finish. He's going to become more and more of a, a big player in the Hearts team, isn't he? It, because we talk about Craig Gordon, we talk about Stephen Presley, we talk about Paul Hartley, that backbone of the Hearts mm -hmm. side. He is a developing talent, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He's, he's